Alright guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astral Auto Repairs. Can you dig it? Alright, check it out. Behind me, we got a 2004 Honda Accord. Customer's complaint is the ABS light pops on and at times the car kind of shakes a little bit. So we're going to check that out, hook up our diagnostic equipment and see what's going on. Coming up on Astral Auto Repairs. All right guys, I got my Atron 9690 hooked up. Usually, I would use the Autel AL539B, but the AL539B does not read ABS or airbag, so I need to go in there. Well, we have a one of four, SRS, the history, I'm not worried about that one too much. Battery voltage malfunction, hmm. We're gonna check that one. Ah, 71. Dash one, wrong size of tire. Definitely we're gonna be coming back to that one. And an 83 engine control module, ECM power control module, relation malfunction. I'm not gonna go that yet. When you get a code like this, it's telling you, hey, something wrong with the computer. You do not wanna attack that code unless you go back and attack all other DTCs. So we wanna go back. This one right here I'm worried about. 71-1, wrong size of tire. Now I'm gonna, show you i'm going to tell you guys what this means and what how the heck do the car know it's the wrong size of tire all right let me shut the key off and we'll be right back all right guys each wheel has a wheel speed sensor and what's going on here is that if you put one tire different size than the other tires it's going to give you that code so the first thing okay in fact for instance if this tire is smaller than the rest i would put an imaginary line right here or take a marker and mark it right here. On each tire, mark it in the exact same spot. Then roll the car forward, one revolution, half revolution, or one revolution, and see, it. what was it, no, 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 two revolutions. Well, no, I would actually have to put something up here so they can know. Have a, you know, how about I take a, a blob of grease or something and put it right here on each tire. Roll the tire two times. So that mark will make an indentation on the concrete. Two spaces, one and two. You do that with all four. You measure the distance between here and here, and all four should be within 10% of each other. If they're off, you got a problem. It could be a worn out tire, it could be low tire pressure, or it could be the wrong tire. So the first thing we wanna do, and these looks like brand new tires. We wanna check the tires out, especially the sizes. And this one is two, 205-60-16. So I'm gonna go and check the other tires and make sure they're the same size. We'll be right back. All right guys, here we go. We're on the last tire over here. And yeah, 205-60-R-16. Okay, all tires are the same size and they're BF good with brand new tires. So, that is not the issue. Huh. Have they had any work done? Oh, I can see the tires done, but um, let me go talk to the customer and see if any work was done when this light came on. Wow, look at this. Yeah, you, oh, you put a brand new tire, don't even tighten up things. So let's go talk to the customer and we'll be right back. All right, guys, good thing I spoke to the customer. The customer did state that this side over here, they had a wheel bearing done. And since the wheel bearing was installed, that's when the problem occurred. Now Honda, you have to put the wheel bearings a certain way. If not, the wheel speed sensor will not be able to pick up anything, the reluctor inside the bearing. There's a reluctor inside the bearing and it will not pick it up. So you gotta put it one way only. It can fit either way, but you gotta put it one way. So now we gotta determine, did they put this the wrong way? Now this is where the Autel AL539B come in. We're gonna jack this up. Let's see if I can get to the wheel speed sensor connector. And we're going to graph this sensor to see if it's picking up anything. If it's not picking up anything, then yeah, pretty much, they put this the wrong way. All right, so I'm going to jack this up. And this driveway is on the incline, so I'm going to make sure I put the emergency brakes on, put some blocks of wood behind the tires, jack this up, get it up on jack stands, because we're going to need to run this up in the air just for a little bit. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, check it out. we got the front jacked up. Got our jack stands up under it. And to, for me to easily get to where I'm gonna get to, I took off both front tires and made sure my emergency brakes are on. Next thing we're gonna do is pull out our Autel AL539B. Rest right. 
uh, we are about to graph the ABS wheel speed sensor. And if you want to see more videos on this machine, check out our new channel, Autel AL539B. And I'll put a link in the description below. All right, now that we got our Autel, the next thing we're going to do, get us a flat screwdriver. And our wiring harness to the ABS wheel speed sensor is right here. It goes around, and then it goes right up to there. And I get a flat screwdriver, and you got to pop that piece out of there. Dang it. There it is. All right, and then you pull. This should have been connected somewhere. Huh. And there's our connector right there. And now what we're going to do is get some back probe pins. These. And again, check out our channel. We got a link to everything that we're using. And what we're going to do is... Can we switch sides? I don't know if we're going to be able to see it then. What I got to do here is get these pins back probed into there. And you want to definitely make sure they're making a connection. And you definitely going to know that when these pins go all the way in. All right, there's one, and then let me hook up the other one. Be right back. All right, guys, now, let's set up our Autel L539B, and what we're gonna do is start it up. We're gonna go down to the multimeter, and we're gonna go down to AC voltage. The first one, is DC voltage, like checking the battery and all that. And the DC, you're gonna notice with a straight line and then a dotted line right underneath it. The one underneath it is AC voltage, that's with the wavy line. So we're gonna go down to that. All right, we're gonna hook this up and get the keys. And huh, gotta make sure this thing can reach over there. Let me get the keys and we're going to show you how to hook this up and we'll be right back. Alright guys, I got my keys and everything. Let's cook this up and we're going to go up here and to the hook one up to one, the other one to the other one. Now, when you're doing this, it really doesn't matter which way you hook it up because if you hook it up the opposite way, the waveform pattern is going to be below zero. You're going to get a negative reading, but the pattern is still be the same. But if you feel comfortable, you can switch it around and bring it up to the top. And now, matter of fact, I'm going to show you that in a minute. All right, so what we're going to be looking for is a waveform, a consistent waveform over here. All right, so I'm going to start it up, and then I'm going to put it in gear. Yeah, look at that guys, sometimes it's reading, and sometimes it is actually just flatlining. Now, what I mean by, see right now, we got it hooked up right. We're on, the, we're on the opposite side, we're on the positive side of that line. Now, if I would've had those connectors reversed, we got to do it by reversing this, our waveform would've been at the bottom. That's all right, even if it's negative down there, that is definitely all right. We're still looking at the waveform. This is this thing is shot, man. And remember, the, the only thing uh, this started as soon as they replaced this hub over here. And I can see right here, it's got a shiny axle nut right here. They replaced the whole hub bearing and everything. You know what I'm gonna do, guys? What we're gonna do is jack up the uh, take the tire off the other side, and we're gonna graph the other side so you, you can. Already did that. What? Put the tire on the other side. I did? Oh, dang. All right. <laughs> what we're going to do is graph the other side, and we're going to show you what the pattern should look like. 
All right, so I'm gonna shut this down and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got it hooked up. Let's go over here, put the key in. Right now, the wheel's not turning, so you shouldn't have anything. Mm. All right, what we do now is put it in gear, back into the other side, and let go of the brakes, and what do we got? Mm, a little waste, a little bit. Like oh, you see, guys? Now, as long as this wheel's not spinning, now it's test, it says in a little bit. Now, the other wheel, when we were doing this, now let's walk over to the other side, the other wheel. See now without us doing anything, let me get my light over here. <laughs> this wheel is spinning on its own. Now let's go to the other side, so we might have to give the other side a little gas. So we need this wheel to constantly be spinning, and then we're gonna check our way from to make sure it doesn't do that what it's doing right now. <laughs> okay. Okay, ready? Yeah. I'm going to try to hold it about 20 miles an hour. But it's not constant spinning. Hold on, no it ain't. No, it's not going to constantly spin like the other side. Let me, uh, you know what, let me, uh, Shut it off. Let me try it again. No, it can take the make one though. Got away from, but then when the wheel stops, it flatlines. Okay, when it's spinning, is the wave does the waveform drop out like the other side? No. Great. Okay. All right, so we definitely gotta. I don't know what they did on now. Okay, we got a little more information on this. The the guy came here to do it. He pulled it apart, and actually, let me show you what happened back here. Let's go back here and take a little walk. So, they went and got the bearing. The guy posted had did the bearing. But, you know, you got to press this on, guys. So, I guess he couldn't get that piece off. So, they went and bought another hub, another bearing. He took it someplace else to get it pressed on. But, I don't know, somebody, somebody messed up something. Because that side is definitely not reading right. And, again, this did not happen until this was changed so we're gonna pull all this stuff back together and we're gonna let the customer know we need we need a wheel but we need a wheel bearing over there <laughs> we definitely need a wheel bearing over there and uh then i can check the sensor see if it see if they damaged the sensor or anything because they had to to do that they had to wait a minute he had to take out the whole spindle and all to take that out unless he banged that in with a hammer or something i don't know that's definitely possible. What happens is, um, you know what, I'm gonna take this over to the side and we're gonna look at this together. We'll be right back. All right guys, to get this all done, and I'm looking, let me look around here. You would have, to get this to do it in a press and all, you'd have to take the whole spindle out, this whole arm right here, everything and disconnected. And, Trying to look at signs. Let's see, like regular, I can see the steel of paint and dirt right there. Um, trying to see signs that it was taken apart. But I don't. And, uh, and here's another thing the bearing goes on. This is the racer that's stuck up there. And there's the inside, so it goes on like that. But, look at this. The diameter of the hub is way bigger than the bearing. So, did they just throw and give her another bearing? I don't know. I'm honestly right now confused as to 
what happened here. All I know is this this over here, I, I got a bad, I got a really bad signal. We're gonna bring the at we're gonna build bring the autel over here and we're gonna just graph it one more time and give a little gas to make sure it is dropping out and all. But this thing has gotta be taken apart. We got we gotta get the right stuff for this. I don't know what the I don't know what the heck going on over here. Alright, let's get the autel, bring it over here, and we'll be right back. Alright guys. Oh, looks Oh, there it is. Just, it just flatlined on us. Try again to see if it does it again. There it is. And as you can see, this wheel is consistently moving. So I should get no dropouts whatsoever. Wow. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, I took the uh, took the sensor out, and the sensor. Matter of fact, let me uh, hold on one second. Here. Okay, that bearing sets in like that. This sensor sets into the spindle and then it rides up against the bearing just like this to get a signal from there. Yeah, I'm noticing there's a lot of grease over here so I'm wondering is this bearing pressed in all the way? Now what I need to do is ask the customer and hopefully she knows when he took this all apart to go get it pressed in did he take all this out? Did he take the whole spindle? Because if he did, more than likely they probably did. Now he didn't have a press here, so when he got here, was he banging this in to get the bearing back into place with, into the spindle? Which means there's no way he could have got that in enough where it could be making a contact. Maybe, the, maybe it's too far out. Maybe the distance is out here instead of being right here, close up to it. That is a possibility. I'm going to talk to her about that. But either way, this has got to be taken apart. This has got to be taken apart. Now, they did put the bearing in. That's what I said. Two ways of putting the bearing in. They did put the bearing in the right way because I am reading. But maybe it's just not enough. We'll be right back. All right, so today we had a 2004 Honda Accord. And the issue was it had an ABS light on. Uh, we found out that she recently had the wheel bearing done, and uh, so we checked it out, see what's going on. Uh, we saw the grease on the sensor, and we know that's not supposed to be there, so we're going to end up taking it apart and see what was done wrong. So make sure to stay tuned for that video. In the meantime, if you guys have any comments or questions, you can post it below in the comment section, or you can email Timmy at tim at astroautorepairs.com. Hope you paid attention. If not, watch it again. This is Sylvia from Astro Auto Repairs. If we can repair it, nobody can. See you next time.